All right, guys, lastly, we're gonna talk about peptides. And so I think that the peptides are actually like the most fascinating from a scientific perspective, as far as like new techniques, new technology, things that could be potentially very, very beneficial, okay? So first one we're gonna talk about is BPC-157, so Body Protective Compound 157. So what this is, is it's a peptide consisting of about 15 different amino acids derived from a protein in the stomach, okay? And that what they found was that this protein and this peptide in the stomach was associated with the healing process, especially when you're talking about things like ulceration. And so they have studied this largely in people with like irritability syndrome, ulcers, ulcerative colitis, and really had like absolutely remarkable results from it. And so how does it work? Well, guys, so it's a peptide that stimulates things like number one, nitric oxide synthase leading to improved endothelial protection and the angiogenic effect. So here's a paper here, which actually shows the evidence of, you know, most of these is not in human trials, guys. It is in rat studies. Just, you know, be aware most of this stuff is not for human consumption like this peptide here. Okay. But it can also activate cells in tissue repair. And so this rat study showed that um, when they actually like severed these rat Achilles tendons and injected BPC-157, they actually had significant increased growth because they had significant increased cellular proliferation of some of those healing factors, especially things like fibroblasts that are associated with, uh, with repair there is decreased inflammation. And so here's a study where they actually like severed rat quadriceps muscles and they showed that there was improved healing, decreased inflammation and inflammation. And once again, improved nitric oxide, guys. Nitric oxide, like in your citrulline-based supplements, is what is responsible for healthy blood flow, which is what's responsible for healing, guys. I can't stress that enough, okay? Then there's even angiogenesis, okay? And so angiogenesis is basically the proliferation of blood cells or increased blood cells to increase blood flow capacity to that area. And so what they looked at um, was the, in these two different studies, they actually increase the rate with which endothelial cells proliferate and grow based on um, increased healing by additional blood vessels, okay, guys? And so I'll put up these studies here. And then what I find most fascinating is that nerve recovery is actually um, significant when we're talking about the BPC-157. Seven, um, because in this study, which looked at the, the central nervous system in rats and nerve damage, nerve recovery, they actually found that even in things like recovery of function after severing rat spinal cords and like their tail movement, that the BPC-157 had a significant benefit there. How are we going to take it? Okay, guys. So once again, I have no experience with this stuff, guys, but I'm putting this in for completion of the video. I'm not advocating that you take it. Okay. So there's oral formulation, there's like a nasal spray formulation, and then there's a subcutaneous injection. And so the oral subroute, if you're going to go that route, there's limited data for this. Most of the data is for things like ulcer conditions in your stomach. There are rat studies that show that it does have a systemic effect. I'll put that up there, meaning you take oral and you have like a tendon injury and it can still increase that tendon repair. But most of the time, the oral is for things like along your GI tract because your gastric acid can break down the BPC-1 if you're going to use oral, you need to use an arginate, okay? Not an acetate. The acetate gets broken down more from your stomach acid and is not as effective. So you need to use an arginate if you're going to go that route, okay? And the dose is somewhere like 500 milligrams twice a day, you know, depending on what you read. If you're interested, please look this up. Never break the law. I'm just putting this information out here for educational purposes, okay? The other more common means for this is apparently subcutaneous, okay? So what that means is like, you know, you have some skin, okay? So you pinch your skin, then you take the injection and you put it just under your skin and into your fat. It's not IM, it's not into the actual muscle, it's just under the actual skin, okay? Most guys use like the skin on their abdomen to do this. Usually the dose that's done is somewhere between 200 to 400 micrograms daily. And that's based on the rat data that was looking at a basically 150 micrograms. And so I don't know if I just said micrograms or milligrams, but 200 to 400 micrograms daily. So, well, how do you do that? So, all right, guys, once again, completion purposes, because I found this actually very fascinated. I'm very fascinated by this. I'm not going to lie. Okay. So you go on your website, okay. And you order a vial of BPC-157 and you get a little five milligram vial. I'll put up a picture here. Five milligrams is 5,000 micrograms. So you get your little vial and then you order something that's called bacteriostatic water. So water that bacteria does not grow in it. 
and then typically it's done using an insulin syringe. For those that have never seen an insulin syringe, it's this tiny little needle that has these little tick marks that usually goes like 10, 20, 30, 40. I'll put a little picture up here all the way up to 100. Each one of those little tick marks is an insulin unit or an IU, okay? So a lot of people here like so-and-so IUs. It's from insulin injection for people who have diabetes, guys, okay? And so, you know, how would you one go about using this? Well, you would take out your insulin syringe and you would basically, if you have the 100 cc, or excuse me, the 100 IU insulin syringe, which ends up being one, millime, one milliliter or one cc, you would like fill it up to the 100 mark, inject it into the peptide, the BPC-157, very slowly because the peptides are very, very fragile. And if you inject it too quickly, it'll actually break down the peptide, okay? And you would do that twice. So you would put a total of two cc's or two milliliters of water using basically two full insulin syringes, okay? So that means for there's 5,000 micrograms and then two milliliters of water in there. So that means for every 10 little tick marks or 0.1 milliliter, you would have 250 micrograms, okay? And so what you would do is basically insert your insulin syringe, suck out 10 of the little marks until it gets to the 10 mark, and that has 250 micrograms. You would then pinch a piece of skin, okay? Pinch the skin down here, and then you would inject it in just below the skin, okay? It's an insulin syringe. It's a tiny little needle. It probably doesn't hurt, probably doesn't feel good though, but that's how you would do it, guys. So you're welcome. And so if you were going for like 200 micrograms, it would be eight of the little units, okay? And so it's, it's not that hard. It's just basic math, guys. It's just a lot of guys don't take the time to do that. Other benefits, some studies show that there's improved muscle strength and stamina. Um, you can have decreased joint pain. Some even question whether there's immunity benefits, okay? What are the side effects? Cold flashes, hot flashes, appetite changes, fatigue, headaches, dizziness. What are the limitations? Guys, we don't have great human data on this yet. There is some human data. It's not very good. We don't know the long-term safety, long-term ramifications of taking this. And then a big limitation of this is where do you get it, okay? So there's something that's called mass spectrometry. Guys, I'm not sponsored. I don't have any promo links. I don't take this stuff. So you don't have to, some of you guys get so upset when something, when my editor has to beat me like you've never heard a freaking cuss word. But anyways, you want to make sure that this is the real deal stuff, guys. So here's an example of mass spectrometry. What this means is that what you are getting is what they say you were getting. And here is the actual science proving that what you get is what you get. Like, for example, this is, a, you know, whatever. This is from a company called Peptide Sciences. They provide their own mass spectrometry, verifying what they have is what they have guys there's many other websites that have this so i'm not saying go to freaking peptide sciences and use code hink 10 i don't have a promo code but this is just one example of if you were trying to get it where you could get it but you want it to be the real deal stuff guys okay there's many other websites that have mass spectrometry but just make sure you look for it before you order and you should shop around because from what i've seen this stuff can be pretty expensive like a vial can be like 300 dollars or something okay this is a banned ped guys if you use this and you are tested for performance enhancing drugs you will fail the test. This is not for human consumption. I don't know how many times I have to say it. Not for human consumption, guys. But if you are desperate and your lab rat has a serious injury, you know, I don't know how I feel about this, guys, because it hasn't been tested, it hasn't been tried and true, but there's actually very compelling evidence. If I had a serious injury, I'm not gonna lie, I would consider taking this, okay, guys? I, I would. I haven't taken it. I don't plan on taking it. Lord, you know, forbid. I hope I never have a serious injury where I would consider this. But if I'd gone through all those other steps and was still having issues, I would consider this, guys. Okay. Anecdotally, there are some like ridiculous success stories. And so what I mean by that is like, well, like Ryan Ryan Hurston or some some fitness guy. He had like actual cervical spine like damage and like couldn't use his right arm, couldn't flex his tricep, and actually used BPC-157 combined with the next one we'll talk about, the TB-500, and actually like recovered from all that. Especially if you go on these different subreddits, you can actually see like ridiculous injury recovery, um, whether it be like coming off an Achilles injury or whatsoever. So there is some compelling stories, but there's limited data. We don't know the long-term effects. So just use with extreme caution if you're using it for your lab rat, okay? And so the next peptide we're gonna talk about is TB500. And so basically what this is, is a synthetic analog of the thymosin beta-4, okay? It's a 43 amino acid peptide sequence. So another peptide that's involved in healing, okay? So why would you consider using this? Well, 
here's some studies, okay, that are looking at endothelial cell promotion, okay, and upregulating the VEGF, the vascular endothelial growth factor that's responsible for basically healthy blood vessels, angiogenesis. You can have an increased tick in that, okay? So here are studies looking at that. Here's another study right here looking at increased angiogenesis, increased blood flow to the area. You can have decreased inflammation, decreased an antioxidants, and even decreased fibrosis, which I've said it before, fibrosis to me is the boogeyman of PE, okay? Basically where your functioning tissue turns to scar tissue. So here's a paper looking at that. You can even have improved tissue repair and even improved the like the stretchiness of the actual connective tissue, okay? Like in this paper here, and then most importantly for nerve regeneration, neuronal gro growth, and even like recovery from spinal cord injuries, we have this paper here, okay guys? So some very, like once again, very promising, very compelling data, guys, um, with another peptide involved in healing repair. And so side effects, headaches, nausea, you know, dizziness, maybe some GI distress, changes in heart rate, you know, anything in the injection site, the risk of infection, bruising, tenderness, whatever, okay? Kind of your generic things. How can you take it? Very similar, guys. We're talking about oral. I really don't think any of like the nasal sprays, I haven't seen any compelling dev evidence that that works whatsoever. I think that's total horse crap, but you know, who knows, okay? Do your own research. But once again, I think Sub-Q would once again be the way to go, whether it's the BPC-157 or the TB-500. That has the most data. That's the most tried and true, okay? The oral, there's still the question of how much you're actually absorbing due to the gastric breakdown, okay? Once again, if you are going to use this route, mass spectrometry, you want to see this, okay, guys? You want to see that what you get is what you're actually going to get. And so, uh, you know, one big kind of red flag with me when I was looking at the TB4 is, um, so many of you know, I'm, uh, you know, whatever, I'm actually an oncologist by training. And so the, the TB4, um, the thymosin beta 4, is actually associated with a lot of different malignancies, guys. And so like hepatocellular carcinoma, a lot of the GI different cancers, you'll actually see when you have increased like rates of um, the TB4, you actually have worse cancer. And so where I think that's more applicable is if you already have a cancer, guys, and you inject this and it actually causes the cancer to proliferate any even more. And so I'll never forget in training, I saw a guy with hepatocellular carcinoma, a liver cancer, and he was a young guy and he was a bodybuilder abusing all kinds of PEDs. And I just, I guarantee you it was because of that PED use. Who knows what he was using at the time? Cause this was like, you know, 15, 20 years ago when I was in training, but still that, that always gives me pause. Cause you know, especially I'm even thinking about things like HRT guys, cause I'm in my forties now, but anyways, so potential cancer warning there. Okay. So what are my conclusions from this study? So once again, guys, this is not for your, like, oh my God, I woke up and I didn't have morning wood. I'm going to freak out and I'm going to order some VPC-157. No, that is not for this. This is guys that have serious injuries that have tried exhausted PT, you know, maybe even things like dry needling, shockwave therapy, meeting with the urologist, meeting with doctors, taking medications, getting ultrasounds, getting all that workup done and still have problems and still do not have appropriate functioning. That is the people who should consider, not take it, consider taking this, okay? Because we don't know a lot of the side effects or the potential like risks of taking this stuff. So you have to be very careful, guys. I don't have any experience with this, guys. And so I'm sure there's going to be, you know, guys kind enough in the comments to point out something that I said was like either incorrect or slightly incorrect, and they probably won't do it in a very kind way. But I don't have any experience with this, guys. And so if you do, you know, please comment your experience below for better or for worse. It would help a lot of the guys on this channel. And so the point is to make this information available in, in general, guys, not to give specifics. If you're looking for specific dosages and all that stuff, please go to a different channel if you're interested in pursuing that guys never break the law this stuff is not for some of this stuff is not for human consumption okay so just you know do your own research please make your own conclusions and just make sure if you're going to do this you know what the heck you're doing okay and so leviathansupps.com for any of the supplements that me and bd personally put together that is going to be well below any market price that you can find i can almost guarantee it especially when we're talking about the quality of the product we also have our test booster vitality that'll be out any day now okay please check that out i'm going to be putting a video out about that if you are looking for enlargement devices peakmalephysique.com has all those once again guys I guarantee you we're going to beat any price that you can find, okay? It's just it's just a fact, okay? If you need to reach me directly, Doc Hink is my Patreon. You can reach me there. Until the next one, guys, thanks for watching. I really appreciate you all. I love you all. Peace and love, guys.